band from Seaside. Good morning, everyone. And as we enter the holiday seasons, we have lots and lots of things going on, so I invite you to take home the Seaside newsletter, put it on your refrigerator, by your bedside, take a look at it. So you can keep, there are so many things going on. Uh, this afternoon, right after the service, we're going to have Cafe on the Lake. Sharon De Leon is going to be preparing her carne asada or polo asada. And for those of you who are vegetarians, her specialty, black bean street tacos. So stick around. And then after you've eaten that, you'll have energy to attend an event that's occurring at 1 o'clock. And that's the drum circle. You don't need to have a drum to come. You don't have to have any rhythm to come. All you have to have is a want to have a lot of noise and have a good time. They clear out the sanctuary here, and sometimes we get as many 75 people up here on the drum circle. If you thought about it, come and do it. Yes. I apologize. Probably the most, most, the most important part of my job, and I blew it, I apologize. Holding the light for us this morning is Master Practitioner Kay Samuelson. Kay is one of 50 practitioners that the church has, and they're here for you. So if you want to talk to a practitioner after the service, go back to the corner to the prayer circle. And if you come before the service, we also have a practitioner in the prayer room on the entrance over here. Use the practitioners, they're here for you. If you're not sure what a practitioner does, as you go out this morning on the right-hand side on the welcome table, there's a what a practitioner, how can a practitioner serve you? There's a folder there that's available for that. Also, after the second service, we'll be honoring Reverend Catherine Economou. Reverend Christian will be talking about that. And we have something going on which is an annual event here, or has become an annual event at Seaside, and it's coping with grief at the holidays, and it's provided by a holiday support circle, and they invite you to come participate in an evening of sharing, support, and inspiration facilitated by Seasons Hospice, Seasons Hospice Supportive Care Staff. So come and enjoy music, learn how to deal with your grief during the holidays, invite your friends, family, if you've lost someone, and you're going to experience, be experiencing that pain, come, let, the, let them relieve that grief a little bit. Also on, on Sunday, December 8th, Reverend Laurie, our newly ordained minister, Reverend Laurie, will be offering a workshop on self-acceptance called Love, Acceptance, and You. In this workshop, you will create a plan to dissolve self-judgment about yourself, learn to love yourself, and shift into self-acceptance. How many of you have bought a cookbook, just out of curiosity? About half, great, wonderful. Well, <laughs> my goodness, 
It's the cookbook girls. For those of you who don't recognize these folks, they're two of the many people who put the cookbook together. There were over 350 recipes in the cookbook, and you can get a sample of three of them after the service. Go out, check it out, and I don't know whether you notice the second cookbook. It's already Christmas wrapped. Buy them, buy five, get the sixth one free. So it's a wonderful opportunity, a wonderful thing to help the church and give gift. Lori Sheets, Love Acceptance, Family Ministry, Parents' Night Out. How many of you out here are parents and wish you had one night out where you could just go shopping or get away or get away from the kids? One, two, three, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon wants 50 nights so she can get away with. Well, what's going to happen in the family ministry uh, is going to take care of your children. So teens and advisors on November 15th, which is this next coming Friday, will provide a parents' night out. So bring your children, ages 2 to 10, to the sanctuary, or to Cardiff North, which is the building up above, from 6 to 10 and go out and have fun. Go shopping, have a party, just get away from the kids for a night. And uh, the love offering, they're asking for a $20 per child with the funds going to the teen camp. If you have any questions, once again, see Reverend Lori. Reverend Lori does a whole lot of things here. And also, family ministry in the family room. In the family room. In the family room, we have lots and lots of tables, the education table. There's a sign up for the Interfaith Shelter Volunteer for that. If you're not familiar with what that is, please read it. And uh, gifts of the heart, the folders that you see up here are available. And chili cook-off is coming up. I can't talk too much about the chili cook-off, but I want to know that I'm going to be preparing my special bluefin tuna chili. <laughs> you, you laugh, you laugh, but it'll make you cry when you have that bluefin chili tuna. All right, and, that's, and, that, and that chili cook-off is all part, we got toys for tots out there, a lot of things going on out there. So that chili cook-off is all part of the, of the Harvest Festival. The Har Here they come, folks, the Harvest Festival, boys and girls, Mom, and Pa. Yeah, Ma. Are we all going to go to that seaside shindig? You know, the Harvest Festival? Yep. I hear tell that they are celebrating their 25th anniversary. Woo-hee! That's a long time. Yep. Hear tell there's going to be free vittles games and prizes, and a band playing some of that newfangled music, reggae. Yep. Heard that there's going to be some purdy things to look at and buy, Pa, all homemade by the folks of Seaside. Yep. I think I'm going to enter my possum chili into the contest. I heard that some city slicker postman, Dennis, won the blue ribbon last year. Yeah. I guess we better bring the youngins, too, along, you know? There's going to be some kind of 20-foot fancy slide and something I never heard before, a balloony twister. Yep. You all come to the Harvest Festival. Now write it down on your calendars. That's in two weeks, November 24th, Harvest Festival. You all come. You're here and bring your chili. Ooh, I'll... Yep. <laughs> Now, I know it's going to be hard choosing between the possum chili and the bluefin tuna chili, but while you're thinking about that, I invite you to stand up and say hello to someone around you. And then stay standing for our congregational song. Please 
remain standing for our congregational song. This morning together we're singing, I've got peace like a river. Here we go. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river in my soul I've got love like a mountain I've got love like a mountain I've got love like a mountain in my soul I've got love like a mountain I've got love like a mountain I've got love like a mountain in my soul Joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain, I got joy like a fountain in my soul. I got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. Like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for the howl. Hey, good morning, Seaside. What a joy it is to be with you today on this blazing bright day. Oh my goodness, yellow is the color for the day. And um, as you know, we have been going through our prosperity principles. And so every time we see yellow this week, it is to remind us of what you're about to hear. You don't know it yet, so it's kind of like deja vu in reverse or something like that. But every time you see yellow, you'll be reminded of how important it is to let go of the dead stuff in your life that's not serving you anymore. And so on the inside of your Sunday program, you'll find the golden heart. And you have the poster. If you don't have a poster, pick a poster up and you take it home. And what you do is you go ahead and you participate along with all of us. You put it right wherever you want on your poster and you've got the yellow. And so every time you see yellow, you will think about the wonderful principle we'll be talking about today. Got it? How that works. I just saw these beautiful flowers. I want to say thank you to the O'Donnell and Marcina families in loving memory of their grandpa, um, Tedwell Weeks Jr. For, he'll always be in their heart and soul. And so thank you for the yellow. The yellow seems to be everywhere around here today. It is a bright color. The sun always shines at seaside. That's for sure. Hey, got another gift for you. It's on the inside of your Sunday program. I'm pointing it out because I don't want you to miss it. It's a bookmark. So I'd love for you to put this in the books that you're reading so every time you see it, you'll realize there's gifts that are coming from my heart. There's gifts coming from the heart of Seaside that you're in that wonderful place. And what you'll find is it's not a corn chip. It is <laughs> a yellow golden heart filled with poppy seeds. And you are to plant that in your garden. And as the flowers come forward, you will just be reminded of the good that is growing in your life, the love that Seaside has for you that is growing in your life, the spirit in your life. So a lot of goods going on here at Seaside, that is for sure. And um, I know Candace uh, is going to pray us in in a moment, but today's also um, a celebration of Veterans Day. And I, I always like to just honor the veterans you know, for a moment because they give me the opportunity to do what it is I do. And there's a story that I'm reminded about a guy who got on a plane to fly back east. And um, at the last minute, there were 10 soldiers that came on and sat all around him. So he struck up a conversation. They said they were heading to uh, Pitawawa uh, for two weeks of training and then off to Afghanistan. It just, wow, you know, that just you know, hit his heart. And flying about an hour, the flight attendant came on and said, you know, sack lunches are available for $7. If you'd like one, you know, let me know. 
And so, you know, he's getting his seven bucks out, and he heard one of the soldiers saying to his buddy, hey, are you going to get a sack lunch? And the other guy says, nah, I don't know. I, seven dollars, I don't think a sack lunch is worth seven dollars. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait till we get there. So the guy noticed none of the soldiers was buying a sack lunch. And so what he did is he got up and went back to the flight attendant, pulled out a 50 and a 20, and gave it to her and said, would you get 10 sack lunches for all the soldiers? And she just took his arm and started crying and said, my son was a soldier in Afghanistan. It feels like you've bought a lunch for him. And he felt, yeah, that was just, that was good. So she grabbed the 10, ten uh, probably boxes, but the sacks, and she passed them out to the, to the soldiers. And she said to the guy, do you, do you prefer beef or chicken? And he, he said, well, chicken, why do you ask? And she went up to first class, and she came back from behind the curtain with a china plate and gave it to the guy and said, here you go, thank you. So when he was done eating, you know, he got up to go to the bathroom. One of the guys in the behind him said, I saw what you did. I want to participate. Here's $25. And then a little while later, he went to stretch his legs. He went up to the front of the plane. As he was stretching, six rows up, another guy said, hey, I heard what you did. Here's a few more dollars. It was another $25. He sat down and said, this is, you know. And he noticed here comes the captain walking down the aisle. And here comes the captain and looking at the number and said, are you the one who just took care of the guys on uh, the plane? He said, yeah. So I want to shake your hand. I was in the military. I was a military pilot. And somebody bought me a lunch once. And it's a memory that will always live with me. And I want to thank you for reaching out like that. And the place blew up in applause. The guy's totally embarrassed. Did not do it for that reason. So when he got off the plane, he was just ready to go. And there was a guy waiting at the end of the gangplank. Slipped something into his pocket and walked away. And when he pulled out, it was another $50 bill. So now the guy had $100. <laughs> And so he saw the soldiers over there, those 10, he took it over and said, you know what, here's 100 bucks, why don't you guys buy yourself a lunch on the way uh, to the base? And he walked away, said, all I could really do was do a prayer for those guys, maybe buy them a couple lunches. And so the story warms my heart. I just want to ask anybody who served our country in the military, if you would stand this day, Veterans Day, so we could just say thank you, let you know we love you, we appreciate you, and know that our heart is just very grateful to the men and the women who have um, served our country. I am, I am just blessed by your presence. These are the ones that wrote a check made out to the United States of America for the amount of up to and including their life. Thank you very much for that. And to take us a little deeper in appreciation and love is the wonderful master practitioner, Candace Young Schultz. Please join me in a moment of stillness. Feeling the reverberation of the bowl taking me yet deeper into my knowing that truly God is all there is. God is right here, right now, in this experience in each and every one of us here. And I know that seaside is a perfect expression of God of the healing, loving, empowering energy, which is God. And I know and affirm that this service this morning is one filled with joy, one filled with enthusiasm, one in which the music by our wonderful band and our guest artist, Michael Paul, touches us. The words of Reverend Dr. Christian are words we need to hear words that open our hearts yet more fully, words that shift our perspective. And the words that Laurie will speak are ones that open our hearts to yet more of the wholeness and love that each and every one of us is. 
and knowing that and knowing that this is a day of profound, delightful celebration. I take a deep breath and I say, and so it is. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America. God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with bread. Thank you, Reverend Fran. That was so beautiful. And thank you, Master Practitioner Candace Young Schult, for praying us in so profoundly. You guys give me God bumps. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson, and I get to welcome you if you're new to Seaside and this philosophy, this faith, and this way of life. Thank you so much for sharing your light with us this morning. We invite you to get a packet on your way out. It's our gift to you with some coupons for the bookstore, and in a way to get involved in this amazing community. Because here at Seaside, we're about community. We're about supporting each other through our challenges and our celebrations. And because the holidays are coming up, you are invited to celebrate Thanksgiving Day with us here at Seaside. I do a service at noon, and then we have a, a potluck dinner at one, not only for our Seaside family, but for lots of people in the community that don't have a place to go or can't bring a dish. So if you know someone like that, please pick up a flyer at the, at the, at the table in the back, and please spread the word. We're also doing it again on Christmas Day, a, a dinner at Christmas Day. So this is a way to celebrate the holidays here at Seaside with all of us. So thank you for being part of, it, of that. Here at Seaside, we're also about personal transformation. We transform the world and we transform individual lives. And to talk about that, I invite the amazing Lori Gertz to come up and tell us her story. Despite what they told me, it is not easier the second time. <laughs> no. Um, I was a little nervous about, okay, I was a lot nervous about talking today. Um, I give presentations as a living. I get up in front of hundreds of people regularly, and I'm not nearly as nervous as I am today. And it's not about you because you bring the light and the love and the energy that makes Seaside a home to me. 
And it's not about our leaders who bring the inspiration or the tools of the teaching, the philosophy that have changed my life, that have helped me to, uh, to realize the expressions of God in my life as I know it to be the truth. But I'm nervous because it's personal. And I know everybody in here has a personal story that they can probably relate to. So this is my truth. And in this, I hope that you find a truth of your own. Through Seaside, I have found a level of self-forgiveness that I never thought was possible. And an understanding of why we go through the journeys that we do. So here goes. Three years ago, my husband and I moved to the area. Sorry for the notes. We moved here to start over with our family. Some of you may know from knowing me because I've really reached out to a lot of people in this community, as have you reached out to me. Some of you may know my family as having two children, but up until 2010, I had three children. We moved to Encinitas to change the scenery a little bit because we lost a child in a pretty unconventional way. For about seven years, I had been parenting a child of another's womb, but I couldn't break through to her. And I felt a tremendous amount of regret, and I felt like a failure as a parent, as a mother. And having to go through that, making a choice and deciding that it was God's intention and, and the best choice to place her in another family it was really a tough one, one I was really struggling with. Our loss and grief wasn't conventional at all. Our family had been a really complicated mess for a while. And so the community that we lived in for those seven years never embraced us, avoided us, in fact. And when it came time for the decision, the clergy didn't even return phone calls. No emails, nothing. There was no support at all. There was too much stigma. Like I said, it was just way too complicated. So we moved without any expectations other than to start over sort of anonymously. We loved and lost a child. We just wanted to be somewhere where our family drama didn't define us. So I walked into this place one day. I'm really not sure what brought me here, but something did. And I found myself weeping in that seat that I have sat in every single week since then. And I couldn't figure it out. It was beautiful. It was loving. It was kind. It was welcoming. And I was weeping, bawling like a baby every single week. I, I really, It really bugged me. Why? This is so great. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Why am I so seemingly unhappy. So after about two months, I called Reverend Christian and I asked if we could meet. I had sort of been threatening to tell him my story for a while. And after I sat down with him and I painstakingly explained what happened to us and what a miserable mother I was and what a miserable mother everyone in the country thought that I was and how much shame and regret I had about the decisions that I had to make about my daughter and about myself as a failure of a mother, having to let go of a child that I loved so deeply but couldn't reach. He sat back in his chair. I guess I'd stunned him. Um, he took a deep breath, and then he leaned in towards me. And I expected the norm. But of course, he surprised me. He said, well, that's quite a story. <laughs> And he went on, but it was kind of like the teacher on Charlie Brown, because I was in shock at the fact that he didn't judge me. It was quite a story. I had this realization just as he said it. Nobody had said that to me before. But it was a story I wasn't living anymore. The words spoken here on Sundays and every other time I walk into this very sacred space our motivations to change the channel, let the leaves fall, what, you know, whatever the metaphor of the day is. In time, Reverend Christian invited me to join Foundations, which has been an extraordinary learning experience for me. 
And I have 20 people in my extended family in that class. A lot of them are here, or they were at the first service. And I love them, and I hold them in my prayers every day. On week eight of the class, because we're going into week nine, there are 10 weeks, right there on page 302 in Ernest Holmes' Science of the Mind, which frightens people that I brought this huge book, page 302, I'm going to read you just this one tiny little thing. See, I'm still shaking. There are no failures in the universe. Spirit never fails. Holy cow. 302, everybody. <laughs> 10 weeks, foundations. This community has welcomed me and our family with a loving kindness that I know only from books and from dreams. In the teachings, I've realized that I can forgive myself. I've realized that my parenting successes and the beautiful relationships that I have with my other two children and in the loving kindness of everyone here at Seaside. Coming to Seaside has given me the tools and inspiration to transform my life. And my gratitude for this space is overwhelming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. And just to let you all know, Lori has jumped in to, to, to do a lot of our up-leveling of our social media, of our publicity for Seaside, so she is giving back big, big, big time. Thank you, Lori. So let's pray. So just turning within to that life, that love, that wisdom, that power, that Throughout us, all of its creation, that power that I call God, that power that has no judgment, that power that is total support of all of its creation, from all of its galaxies to its planets to its creatures. It is all God. It is all light. It is all love. There is no place where that light and that love and that support and that community is not because God is all there is. And that is who I am right here and right now, and each beautiful spirit here is. The perfect manifestations of that light, that love, that wisdom, that support of spirit. And so I am knowing that out of this sacred time together, that that light, that love, that wisdom of spirit flows through and as each one, letting go of any false notions, any dead leaves, anything that no longer serves, just surrendering to that light and that love and the perfection and that wisdom of spirit that is the truth of each life, that abundance, that, that absolute bliss and joy of spirit right here and right now. And for this bliss, for this joy, for this abundance of spirit that is through and as this sacred space and everyone here right now, I'm just so, so grateful as I release this word to the law, knowing that it's now done in perfect bliss and joy and abundance and wisdom and support and community and love. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, everybody? Wow. I just feel sort of wow, don't you? Sort of wow? Wow. Um, I forgot to say this the first service, and I realize if I don't tell you today that um, with the ongoing events that I might not get it in, on December 6th, mark your calendar, we have a fabulous jazz concert. Um, Joe Garrison and Night People, La Nouveau, a Society of Friends, December 6th, Friday night, 7.30, Lynn Willard has been a part of the 14-man ensemble, men and women. I want to encourage you to buy your ticket at the door. I am very proud of this group. Carl and I have listened to their CD, and I have to tell you, it's marvelous. It's simply marvelous. So please uh, mark it on your calendar. Now, Michael Paul Smith is here. Would you please put your arms out and your hands together and welcome Mr. Michael Paul Smith. Hello, our beloved brother and friend. <laughs> I love you, Ed. We'll talk. All right, Michael Paul Smith. Good morning, Seaside. Woo! Well, you know, one day I was 
on walking in the universe. And as I beheld the wonders of the stars and the moon and the sky, spirit whispered this to me. progress that you make. The reasons are clear. It's in every gift you give. Love your life, love your dreams. You will do amazing things. All the places you will go and the people you will know Don't worry when, where or how Cause you don't need to know that now You're on the right track No need to look ahead nor back Just enjoy what this day brings You will do amazing Work it out, just stay in the here and now. Let your mind rest for a little while. Sometimes deepest answers come when you're out here having fun. So close your eyes and take a breath and just smile. Cause you're amazing Yes, you're amazing And you will do amazing things You're amazing Just amazing and you will do amazing things. For you don't have to work it out. Just stay here and now. Let your mind rest a little while. Sometimes deepest answers come when you're up. So close your eyes, take a breath, and just smile. Woo! You're amazing, just amazing, and you will do amazing.
that is Michael Paul Smith doing amazing things with his voice. Truly, truly amazing. Woo! All right, I can do that too. Woo! <laughs> amazing. Hey, uh, hey, this morning's message is dead trees don't lose their leaves. When I first saw that, I said, what was I thinking with that title? That is a, a strange one. But then I read it. It's like it was quite brilliant uh, re- uh, writing for the day. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have read it already. But, you know, the correlation that is that, you know, in the fall, the leaves turn their brilliant colors and then they fall. And that's the natural process. The leaves that turn their brilliant colors and then stay on the tree and turn brown and just hang there, it's because the tree is dead. It's not letting go of the last of its uh, life. It's holding on. And so the dead trees are the ones that have the leaves hanging on it and the Trees that have greater possibilities in a new spring and the life flowing inside of them are standing bare and vulnerable to the elements. You can see their structure just standing there ready to be that place where there is a new life ready to come forth. But it had to drop its leaves so there's a space for the newness even though it's not there yet. There is still something stirring below the surface, stirring inside. And so keeping with the tree analogy, uh, there's this story loggers tell about when there's a a rookie who's out there logging and they're sending the logs down the river and there's a log jam and they can't move. The new kid on the block starts moving the logs from the edge one at a time on out until they get to the middle to loosen up the logs so they'll flow downstream. Where the the guy who's been around uh, the block or the mountains for a few years you know, the, the professional, he climbs up to the tallest tree and looks down upon the river, sees which log you, w- the jam is at, sends somebody out to the middle with some dynamite, and poof, boom, and that river does its course, and it starts moving a lot faster. Both of them work now, but I got to tell you, you can have a blast to where it is you want to go, and that's what spirit will do in our life, is that it will blast us to the prosperity. It will blast us to a greater sense of ease and well-being. It has a way of moving us further further, farther if we are open to that, or we can hold on to doing it slowly through our meticulous, intellectual, and intelligent kind of way. But I want you to know that Spirit is ready to blast you into a wonderful flow. There's a river that is flowing there that has never gone away and is ready to take those problems down the stream. And so it's up to you to listen to that. It's up to you to feel that because I'll tell you what, um, that spirit is there and what happens so often is people have the log jam in their life. They have places where they're stuck. They say, this is permanent. This is what the doctor said, that I will never walk again or it will take this long to get healed or my uh, employment is such that I can never move up higher or uh, I have this difficulty in a relationship that I can't get out because it supports me and I listen to their uh, evidence of why they are stuck in this permanent situation. I want you to get that spirit will come and blast you to a new level of being that the prosperity can show up in your life beyond your salary beyond how you know it can be done if you are open to that but you got to stop holding on to the dead leaves the old ways the old beliefs and create the room for spirit to show up in your life because yeah because it's stirring there it's moving there the possibilities are there and I listen to people moving the logs slowly from the edge. If I could just make it, you know, if I can just pay the bills, if I could just survive, if I can just make ends meet, well, I'll tell you what the scripture says is that the spirit puts a river in the desert. It brings a stream to where it's barren. What are you looking for here? I'll assure you the economy in heaven's doing okay. You know? And you can be part of that economy of the divine that abundance you can be blasted to that greater expression you don't have to get stuck and have to figure out how it's going to happen i want you to know that there is greater good that is coming your way it is spirit that knows where the 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 good is hidden it knows the good deals that have yet to express itself it knows where the the contracts lie it knows where the right investments are it knows where the inheritance is spirit knows how to blast you to a greater way but you've got to be willing to allow that river to flow beneath you and carry you forward because there is something that is coming to you and when I say something's coming to you people say oh yeah I don't need any more the challenges the difficulties the restraints I don't need any more bad times coming to me hold it back well I could agree with them but then it would only make both of us wrong you know there is a wisdom and there is an intelligence and you know there is a difference between the knowledge this is the human condition and a wisdom of the spiritual condition Someone once shared with me the difference between um, the, the knowledge and wisdom is knowledge is that tomatoes are a fruit 
and wisdom is you don't put it in your fruit salad. You know? It's kind of how it works. Are you open to the wisdom? And as wisdom begins to bring new awareness, new revelations come. Someone shared with, with me once, a Christian, I realized that I wasn't looking for a career. I was just looking for paychecks. And I go, oh, wow, okay. Well, you got to realize money doesn't bring you happiness. And what they sh shared is no, but it sure makes uh, misery a lot easier to live with. <laughs> what are you looking at? What are you holding on to? What is it you are perceiving in your life? How are you and what are you open to having show up in your world? Are you open to what's coming towards you? Then that's something that's coming to you. It could be greater good. It could be new ideas. It could be revelations. It could be a blast and all of a sudden your mortgage is paid off. Blast! And all of a sudden there is a prospering revenue new stream into your life you had no idea. Boom! A blast because there is this higher perspective that God has that says, you know, that log jam can be gone. You can walk again. You can be healed. You can be a divine experience. You can stand up confidently and proclaim what it is you came here in this world and whatever those blocks have been and now dissolve into the nothingness if you are open to what is coming towards you. Because God knows where that good is buried. It knows where the good deals are. You've got to be open and receptive to that. And as you are, what begins to happen is that shows up. But we get sidetracked too often in our life. There's a story, I'm sticking with the garden stuff, of a guy who just loved his, his garden and his farm. He took care of this land, he nurtured it, he bought the organic seeds, he turned the crops, he planted his orchard, he tilled the soil. And one day he was out there plowing, saw a sparkle, and he reached over and he picked it up and realized it was a diamond. He held it in his hand and poof, into smoke. And what stood before him was this goddess who said, you have taken such good care of this land. You have loved this land so much that we want to reveal to you the treasures that are hidden on your land that no one has ever known. He said, wow, that's exciting. She said the treasures, it's gold, it's precious metals, it is jewels, it is gems, it, it is diamond. And you will find the first pot of these treasures in the first apple tree you planted in your orchard at sunset, you take that home, you set it in your house, and it will reveal to you where the rest of the treasures of your land is. But there's only one catch. There's a white rabbit that lives on your land that's been here before you have ever been here. Do not think about this white rabbit. <laughs> because the day you do, the treasure will be gone. But if all the treasure is gone, the white rabbit will be gone. And so she was gone, and he, it was about sunset, so he went to the orchard, and there, sure enough, in front of that apple tree was this pot lined with the gold and the sparkles and the jewels and the gems, and he started running towards it, and then he just thought about that white rabbit and started looking and said, boy, I sure hope that, you know, I don't want him to lose his life. Why is his fate in her? And then he looked back, and it was gone. And what happens in our life is when we take our mind off that goal, that dream, that vision, when we begin to put our mind and awareness on something other than that treasure, than that spirit, when all of a sudden we realize there's a log jam and all I can see is the log jam and no blast to eradicate that stuckage, to eradicate that which appears to be permanent in my life, that is what begins to be the truth in our life and in our world. And you begin to give up. You begin to res uh, just reside back into I don't know how. And open up to more of not, don't know how in this. You have got to create the room. You've got to drop the leaves. You've got to create the space for that spirit to move from within inside your being and reveal a greater possibility, even when things are to the contrary. There's a story of when they were putting a dam, uh, this is a long time ago, in Maine. And they contacted all the people on, on the valley floor because they were going to put this dam across the river and it was going to back up into the valley. They told all the residents there that they were putting in a dam that they'd have a few years before it was complete and the water backed up, but they needed to find other places to live and they would assist. It was interesting. The next day, people stopped taking care of their houses. Things that broke, they left broken. The sidewalks that started to have cracks started to have weeds growing through that. And all of a sudden, that town began to die that day when they said there was no longer any future. And one of the townsfolk said something very wise. He said, as soon as the faith in the future is gone, we lost the power of the present. Got that. As soon as we lose the faith in the future, we lose the power of the present moment. 
And so when people come up against tough times, they get into woe is me, I feel sorry for myself, and they continue to struggle. But the masterful manifestors in their life, the ones who practice the prosperity principles, begin to take a look at that dynamic of that challenge and say, okay, what is it I can learn from here? What is it I need to know? And they go out and build themselves a new house, but not this time, not in a valley, but on a mountaintop where they can look out and have a broader view and see in a higher, from a higher place like God sees in their life. This is what the challenges will do is they will elevate one to a greater perspective and know that God is so present even the ch- most challenging of times. Norman Vincent Peale, power of positive thinking guy, he said that God will often send gifts wrapped in problems. You get to unwrap them. You get to take a look, find out what it is that is here. You know, there's an old cliche that winners never quit and quitters never win. So what I want us to be aware is there's something that is seeking to become conscious of itself as you. There's a life force, there's an intelligence, there is a divine vibration that is seeking to become conscious of itself as you, as your very life. And if we are caught up in the surface mind, the the human mentality, the atom mind, that life is tough, that there is struggle, that there is fear, that there is anxiety, that there is doubt, then that becomes the reality. But I want you to be aware that there's something grand about you that wants to become conscious of itself as your very life, and you are the one who has to catch that image. You're the one who has to catch that vision. You are the one who's got to allow that which knows how to bring prosperity beyond your present level of revenue or stream in your life. The one that knows how to bring us river to the desert to blast your world into a place of seeing the grandness of who you are. You've got to catch that image. You've got to feel that pulse, that impulse. Um, Michael Beckwith calls it a glimmage, a glimpse of the image that is about to, to birth itself as your life, but you have got to give it access. You've got to know that there's something that's capable of having it happen. You've got to step into the tonality of that vibration, that, that vibratory frequency that is able to manifest itself as our very life. You've got to begin to walk in it even before it is manifesting. Rather than walking in the town is dying, I'm walking in there is something stirring in my soul even if the branches are bare right now. There is a life force that is seeking to blossom and birth itself and faith is walking in that with a deep knowing that it is possible. It is putting the attitude in that kind of direction and not giving your power to elsewhere because where you put your attitude is where your actions go. I was in a, some restaurant on, on a road trip and I was done and I asked the waitress if I could have a to-go cup with ice because I had a bottle of water in the car. She said, kind of cloud came over her face, I don't think we can do that. And I looked at her and said, oh, yes, you can. She said, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, just sometimes you need to be strong with what is showing up in your world. It is the attitude. Mark Twain says you got to take your brain out every now and then and dance all over it because it cakes up. You know? You're only an attitude away. That's it. You know, the 23rd proverb, verse 7 says, As one thinks within their heart, with inside themselves, so are they. So is their life. So is the reflection. And so you've got to realize you can think it and see it once, but it doesn't make it so because you slip back to the way it was. You know, the, old, the cliche, or I shared with you once, a farmer shared with me, about the problem with milking cows is they don't stay milked. <laughs> The problem with our attitudes, we tell them this is the way to behave, and it goes back. You know, I I dropped all the leaves, and now I got space for the newness, and it shows up, and now I got to let go of the good for greater good, but I'm unwilling to let go of the new good because it's good, but now there isn't space for greater good in my life. You got to realize it is the present moment where the power is, but we get caught up in our filters and what it is and how it is we're looking at, we're trying to move it from the edge. How are you able to see? There's a guy who goes into a psychiatrist's office. And he's wearing a cantaloupe on his head for a hat. And he's wearing bacon around his ears for an earmuff. And he walks into the psychiatrist's office and sits down. The psychiatrist rings his hand with glee. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a good one. And, and the guy with the cantaloupe on his head and the bacon on his ears said, I have come here, and he said this to the psychiatrist, to talk about my brother. <laughs> it's like, it's always someone else. 
and the psychiatrist had the filter it was going to be about him. You know, and what happens is when we think it's going to be about him, or we think it's going to be about this, and we're caught up in the human condition, we're caught up with the reports that are out there, we begin to no longer be in the present moment where the power lies to create a greater good and a greater expression in our life and in our world. And so if you're not present for the power in your life, you're not aware of the possibilities that are there. How can you make a better choice? How can you realize you don't have to start moving the logs from the edge, that you can go right to the center and have a God blast to get the river flowing in your life again if you don't know, if you're not aware. You can't choose if you're not aware. And so you're caught up in the human experience that I'm my body and I'm my human experience. This is who I am and we begin to defend that because we're unaware that we're more than our body. We're more than the human experience. That does not define who I am. That's an experience I have gone through that has been my soul path bringing me my soul lessons but I'm dropping those leaves. I'm dropping that attitude and I am now open and available for a greater expression for the presence of God to have its way as its very life. I am open to receive what God has in store for me. I am open for prosperity beyond the possibilities that I've known. Hey, that's a great affirmation. Let's say that. I am open open to prosperity beyond what I knew was possible. Touch your heart and say that. I am open to prosperity beyond what I knew was possible. Again, I am open to prosperity beyond what I knew was possible. Well, if you truly believe that, then your prayers are not going to be coming from the little mind that is trying to get something to move, but rather it is coming from that grand aspect that is seeking to emerge and become conscious of itself as you, that wants to proclaim, announce, and pronounce to the world the truth of my being. The truth is that I am willing to let go to the joy. I am willing to let go of the old leaves and let go of that which has constrained me. I am willing to let go of trying to fix it little by little and be open to the blast. I am willing to let go to the God blast. I am willing to let go to joy. Joy. I'm willing to let go to love. I'm willing to let go to the abundance. I'm willing to let go to the prosperity. I'm willing to let go to that intimate relationship. I'm willing to let go to the newness that is seeking to express itself as my very life right now. That's what will happen. And it becomes yours when you're willing to say yes to that. So I got to tell you, what's coming your way Is that good? Is that prosperity? Is that love? Is that joy? Is that relationship and the magic of walking through this life knowing that that river of God is moving through you and becoming conscious of what it is as your life? God bless us. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Michael Paul Smith back to this stage. You're amazing, you know that? If you know the words, please join with me on this next song. And 
saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them. than I'll ever know and I think to myself Woo! What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky are also on the faces of the people going by. I see friends shaking and saying, How do you do? They're really saying, Seaside, I love you. And I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, oh, this is a wonder. Woo! This is a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. Michael Paul Smith reminding us. What a wonderful world we live in. Thank you, Michael. All right, well, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to share our gift, to share our offering, and know that truly is a seed that is planted, that multiplies and expands within our life and, and within our world. And so I want to invite our ushers to come forward at this time and, and just say thank you to this, this wonderful crew that is consistently there for us, to greet us, to welcome us, to make sure there is a seat for us and to be that place through which we send forth this wonderful gift. And so I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing truly that the blessings of the divine unfolds its expression right here in this very moment through each and every one. For that infinite stream, that river that can move through the barren deserts, moves right here through each and every one of us, bringing the richness, the freshness, the green, the vitality, life itself. And I know right now that we send forth that which has been within our life, knowing that which is blessed continues to bless. And so feel that sense of peace that comes, that security that comes, that, that calmness that comes with knowing the source is within. That I need no longer hold on to the old lease or the old ways and just open up to that which continues to merge to bring forth the new growth, the new life, and the joy of being. So shining that expression of life itself, we go forth in this time sending this love forward, knowing it continues to bless all those with whom it comes in contact. And so it is. Amen. Together, let's say this affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good now. Now.
just stand in this glorious music and this abundance, feeling the outpouring of love in that wonderful river of life itself and knowing that this gift that has come from each and every one of our hearts continues to expand. It comes from the wellspring of the divine itself, that infinite source. And I know through each and every one of us, we become that place in which that spirit sources the world in which we walk. Grateful to have our attention, our attitude pointed in that abundant direction. We find the greatness and the economy of the heavens blessing our world in which we walk. And so it is. Amen. All right. And that is Trudy McGrath, your board president. <laughs> Guys on the band, tearing it up as always. Fabulous. Michael Paul Smith, always a joy to have you come on down here on a Sunday. <laughs> Reverend Fran, bless you for your wonderful expression of love. Dr. Christina, thank you for sharing this Sunday morning expression, as well as Thanksgiving Day, where you're going to be doing a talk and feeding the multitudes, and Christmas Day, where you're feeding everyone, and New Year's Eve. You're just a party gal, a seaside. We thank you for holding, and volunteers are always welcome. Hey, giving us sound in the back is Ed, giving us visual is Marv. Great job, guys. And, and streaming this live to the world is Timothy Griffin. Bless you for your consistency on, on delivering this to literally thousands and thousands of people. Oh, so let's see. Hey, next week is the big Sunday here at Seaside. Once a year, we come together and we, um, we share just uh, wonderful blessings that have touched our heart and touched our soul and say, this is how I intend to remember Seaside in the upcoming year. And Seaside does all sorts of good. I'm just looking at Candace right now, who is uh, the big campaign to raise food, had committed a ton to the Community Resource Center, and we surpassed that this last week. So congratulations. <laughs> Very exciting. Wanted to, to acknowledge that. Yes. And so they were quick to share with us. They now have 10 tons of food for the 50 tons they need for the holidays. So we're not stopping, but we've met our goal. So thank you, everyone. You see, together we are able to do amazing things. So this is why once a year we come together on what we call our Pledge Sunday. It is the Sunday in the course of the year where I say, hey, guys, what's your intention for 2014 in your support of this community? Because we're putting together a budget for the following year, and we want to do it in an intelligent kind of way. I mean, we know God will provide, but it's nice to have an idea up front so we're not, you know, oh, overstretching the bounds. Even though we know Spirit will provide, it's nice to put us on a track where we know it, it is solid so we can grow from that. And so that's next Sunday. And, um, and, and I share that because um, I, I gave or I'm sending or I've made available, that's the right word, a book for everyone on our website you can download called Your Pathway to Prosperity. I encourage you to, to pick that up. It is yours. It's your gift uh, from Seaside. But also I'm doing that because I've, um, we've got this fabulous video that Richard and Sally Crawford created, three-time Emmy winners, I mean big time out there in the world, and it is the perfect video I would usually play just before we do the pledge next Sunday where I move everybody's heart and go, yeah, count me in. But you know what? I thought it was even more impactful to do it after the collection so you have all week to think about it. I want you to... I'm sending you a letter this week. You can read about it. You see this video, and I want you to think about Seaside and the difference it has made in your life and in your world. We've come a long ways together, and Richard and Sally found some clips from some of our earlier days of moving in here. And so I want to share this, um, this film at this moment. It's just three minutes, so relax, see it, and think about it through the course of the week so when that letter does come, you're coming from a thoughtful, prayerful, meditative place as opposed to getting caught up in any of the excitement we're going to create next Sunday which will be big. We got music, we got sound, we got choir, we got kids, we got testimonials. It's like Easter in November. But <laughs> I, so I want you to think about it. And not, so Marv, would you roll that? And, and thank you, Sally and Richard, for this wonderful video. We begin to create our reality. We so begin to experience the demonstrations in our life. And I believe this new facility that the Seaside Church is moving into is a result and the manifestation of many people coming together. Good morning, Seaside. Just practicing. Imagine, before long, this place will be converted into a beautiful thousand-seat sanctuary. I stand in our beautiful sanctuary because people made a pledge. Where we have come from, it was a divine idea in the mind of God that has birthed itself through a group of individuals that were ready to hear that call and had the courage to follow that vision. We had a dream of having our own home. Whoa, wow, uh, look what you have built. This is fabulous. Oh, good morning, Seaside.
And it's time to keep that unfoldment of this wonderful vision of Seaside going. It's time once again in the fall to come together and unite in our intentions for this coming year to keep the unfoldment of this spiritual campus going. A place where people can feel the presence of God. When they drive up onto this campus, they can hear the children playing. The practitioners are here praying and healing is going on. Lives are being transformed because all of us come together once a year and say, you know what, count me in. Where we get to look within our heart and listen and see how Spirit has supported its work as our life and what can we do to support Spirit's work in the life of others. Seaside is holding a pledge drive. Seaside receives 100% of its funds from financial contributions from you, our community. It's your word that you'll help make something specific you want to happen over the next year. You get to create the life you love just the way you like it. Basically, your contributions keep these doors open and allows us to fulfill the greater vision, to reveal love, to honor all paths that lead to higher consciousness and to celebrate life. At Seaside, we've created our own clubhouse for playful living. Your contribution goes to Seaside to pay a dedicated staff and who are here to help and guide you on your own spiritual path. To provide this beautiful building that we're in, this awesome music that you hear on Sunday, and the daily requirements to make Seaside the growing, thriving spiritual community that it is. Seaside counts on your generous pledge to provide funding for 2014 to support this growth. You can break up your gifts in weekly, monthly, or yearly amounts. Consider 10% of your yearly budget or, or whatever works for you. So how do you sign up for this awesome club? How do you pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag. Well, we're happy you asked. The easiest way is to fill out a pledge card online. Or you can put one into the offering basket, you can drop it off into the family room or office, or you can do it as an auto tithe where it's automatically withdrawn and you don't even have to think about it. We hold for you and know that the upcoming year will be full of prosperity, full of freedom, full of growth for both you and Seaside. Richard and Sally, thank you so much for creating that. And Edwin, we saw your voice. Oh boy, so smooth. So I want you to just contemplate and pray and meditate on that because Seaside is an amazing place. We are sharing such gifts for humanity and for the world. And one of the biggest gifts that we're sending out into the world is just so right and it's in a sense heartbreaking, but it's heart opening. What greater good can one do but to share with the world that which is of most value to you? And so as all of you heard, Reverend Catherine Economo has accepted the letter of call to be the lead minister, the senior minister, the spiritual leader out of Temecula Center for Spiritual Living. And I know, Catherine, you want to come up here? I know we got some pictures, but it's, and Lori, you can come on up and, and, and Marv with some pictures. 16 years Catherine has been part of our family. This young 20-something girl came wandering in from the East Coast and, um, Marv, some pictures. Well, a few things as those pictures get wound up. Uh, it is my joy to be able to talk a little about, about Reverend Catherine's earlier years. You see they're graduating as a practitioner in 2001. She became the youth director of all of Seaside in 2005. At 2005, that's right, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, good. And graduated from Holmes Institute and became a minister in 2005 as well. Now this little corner picture up here, that is not me leaning on Catherine because I do not sleep with my mouth open. <laughs> During her later years, she yeah. became the dean of Holmes Institute, which we know her well as. That was in 2006. And she served so well there before taking on 
the director of education role here at Seaside. A few fun facts are that the number of ministers that Reverend Catherine has shepherded through our teaching is 71. Wow, that is impressive. She saw their light and pushed and ease them through ministerial school. The number of graduations she's coordinated and has lived to tell about it, 18. Wow. 18. The number of ministerial student internship papers she read, 882. Wow. It might have been 1,000. The number of husbands that she acquired through Seaside. <laughs> one. A hey, delightful hey, hey. one. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for lending us Reverend Catherine so much. And the number of hearts, certainly, that she touched in all of us, in all of her students, in all of North County, that is infinitesimal, as we all know. So. And now I would like to uh, give you a gift on behalf of the ministers and the staff. And the congregation. And the congregation. Life is always yeah. better when we're in classes. <laughs> Reverend Catherine saying. And now I'd like to invite Helen Lipka up from the Board of Directors to present Reverend Catherine. Some flowers. And um, congratulations on your appointment. We'll miss you, but we see great success ahead for you. Thank you. Tammy's got a few words. I'd like to invite you all to a brief reception to say hello and uh, to Reverend Catherine. There's chocolate cake with chocolate icing back there. We have a mic. Oh, I was going to tell that. Remember that one time? Oh, I'm not going to tell that. I'm not going to tell that here, but I might tell it back there. All right. How about Reverend Tammy shares? A bit I just want to say also that we love you. 16 years is a long time. To watch her grow up and see spirit manifest as her, the amount of people you've touched. I know, I'm so grateful for all the people that are going to get to feel you and see you and know you. Temecula is just going to be beaming. So thank you, and please come back and visit often. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to let you say a few words. He promised that I get to talk today. So I knew that this is coming, and Reverend Christian had mentioned a couple weeks back that it, I was going to have to talk. So I've been thinking about it for a long time, about um, what this place means to me, really. And the truth is, I walked in here at 26, lost, very similar to the story we heard today, and I was one of those who sat in the back and cried for six months. I had six months, so I, I got like, some time on you on that. And, and I found here who I am. I created a relationship with God. I figured out what I was here to do in the world and was so supported by these people who I can't look at right now. <laughs> and I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful to the ministers here and I'm grateful for the practitioners and for all of the, all, everyone who's been in classes with me or in a class that I facilitated because I've gotten so much out of just being able to play here and serve here. And what I know, and, and I created my whole life here. I mean, I, I met my husband in a class. We got married here. We blessed my baby on an Easter here. And, and uh, we just have created our whole life here. And so Seaside's alive in my heart. And the joy that it is, is the foundation that will will carry me uh, in my ministry. And so I feel like I'm leaving, but I don't feel like you're leaving me. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs>
And why don't you pray us out? You hold this for me. I need two hands to pray. Ugh. And for everyone who's journeyed with me along those pathways, everyone came back today, and I'm so grateful for you here. All right, so just moving into this realm together, breathing into that center space and knowing that the truth is God is that presence and power of love. That essence of joy that is the manifestation of seaside is simply God in action as life itself. I know that it is ever moving and breathing itself into being every minute, every thought, every interaction. And truth is, Spirit simply sings the song of life through each of us. For we are united in this power, in this presence. And as we come together in this day, we open to that magnificence that this life is. And so I'm knowing here, right here and right now for Seaside, that each person here is that divine emanation of freedom, that each of us is sourced and supported and guided from on high, and that our lives are magnificent revelations of wholeness and of abundance and of freedom. And as we step fully into it, surrendering any ties, surrendering any sense of limitation that God has made manifest easily and effortlessly in this world through each of us, and so I bless this day, and I bless this knowing, and I bless this gift that is seaside unto our lives, knowing that it simply is here to serve and support us and allow each of us to become that fullest expression of who we have come here to be. And that is a gift to us, it is a gift to each other, and it is a gift to the world. And so blessing this and celebrating this, I honor that, and I simply sing the song of the heart, which is joy and gratitude and in great great thanksgiving I surrender my word knowing all is well for all is love and so it is Amen. there was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I did not know the grace of God was sufficient I did not know the love of God was at hand but now I can say if you are discouraged and trying to make it through just one more day you gotta let it go let it all go and this is what we have to say come on I release and I let go Yes, I'm only here for God. You know there's no more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. You know that I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open. Yes, I'm only here for God And there's no more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for Sing to Catherine now, everybody No, there's no more struggle, no more strife. Faith, I see light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Hey. For affirmation, I just want you to know Catherine will be in the back. There's a book for memory. Sign that. Enjoy the cake. There's a microphone back there to share stories for all of us to hear. Maybe you'll hear stories how I used to make her show up in costume on Halloween or climb the peaks of the Rockies and spiritual bonding with the ministers. You know, stories like that we can tell. Or the Steve one. Or the one Lori. Anyway, hey, let's get there. And let's say together this affirmation. I easily release that which no longer serves me. Again. 
I easily release that which no longer serves me. One more time. I easily release that which no longer serves me. And our song of grace. I'm living in love. I'm living in peace. I'm living my life for what I believe. To joys and through fear in this world I walk. God's grace shines on me. Well, it shines on us all. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. Well, living in love. We're living in peace. United we stand as one family. Together we go. God's grace moves to me, and it moves to us all. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in grace. We are living in. Grace. 